Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I am Hamad Yusuf. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa sent a written letter to the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud, regarding the brotherly historic relations between the two countries and people and ways to enhance them in all areas. The letter was delivered by the ambassador of the Kingdom of Bahrain in Riyadh, Sheikh Ali bin Abdul Rahman bin Ali Al Khalifa, and was received on behalf of the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Saudi Arabia, His Highness Prince Faisal bin Farhan bin Abdullah, by the Deputy Minister of Foreign Affairs, Engineer Walid bin Abdul Kareem Al Khreji. The two sides discussed the long-standing brotherly relations and ways to promote them in various fields for the benefit of both countries and people, in addition to exchanging views on regional and international issues of common interest. The Minister of Youth and Sports Affairs, Ayman Lim Ayyad, and Southern Governor, His Highness Sheikh Khalifa bin Ali bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, inaugurated Zalag Youth Empowerment Center. Lim Ayyad said that the ministry is taking a firm approach in developing youth activities in the kingdom and implementation of the directives of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and the government program headed by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, and in line with the strategy of His Majesty the King's Representative for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, National Security Advisor, and Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports Affairs, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, and the support of the first Deputy Chairman of the SCYS, President of the General Sports Authority, and President of Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, and providing ideal conditions for the development of the youth in the kingdom. The Infrastructure and Environment Workshop was held with the participation of a number of ministers, undersecretaries, assistant undersecretaries, and directors of infrastructure and environment sectors in the government. The Minister of Industry and Commerce and President of the Infrastructure and Environment Aspect, Zaid Zayani, affirmed that the workshop comes to increase the contributions of the public sector to the comprehensive development process led by His Majesty the King and implementation of the directives of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister to involve officials from government institutions in providing the mechanisms and priorities that will create the future aspirations of government work for the benefit of the country and its people. Zayani noted that infrastructure and the environment is one of the top priorities that play a vital role in boosting various economic sectors and supporting the private sector to become a major engine for growth in order to achieve the goals of Bahrain Economic Vision 2030. An implementation of the directives of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister for the ecological areas in Wadi Labhair be considered a nature reserve. The Ministry of Oil and Cooperation and Coordination with the Ministry of Works and Urban Planning and Development Authority began taking the necessary measures in this regard through enhancing efforts to continue development work, infrastructure and service projects in the area. The Minister of Oil and Environment and Special Envoy for Climate Affairs Dr. Mohammed bin Daina, the Minister of Works Engineer Ibrahim Al Hawaj and the Chief Executive of the Urban Planning and Development Authority, Nov Jamshir, conducted an inspection visit to Wadi Labhair. Dr. Bindaina affirmed the Ministry's keenness to cooperate with all partners to implement the directives of His Royal Highness, noting the importance of enhancing environmental sustainability. He noted that Wadi Labhair is characterized by a unique terrain that was formed over many years, noting that it is an attraction for resident and migratory birds, as well as a habitat for many plant and animal organisms. Al Hawaj affirmed that the Ministry began implementing His Royal Highness's directives which aim to enhance the march of developing infrastructure in line with urban progress and providing the best services to citizens and residents to achieve sustainable development goals and the economic vision 2030. He also affirmed the ministry's keenness in regards to areas of an ecological nature, stressing that preserving environmental landmarks and natural areas in the kingdom is a priority. Jamshir expressed thanks and appreciation to His Royal Highness for his directive and noted that the authority will take all necessary measures to preserve and support environmental resources sources in the kingdom in line with Bahrain Economic Vision 2030. The National Initiative for Agricultural Development announced the end of the first phase of the national campaign for afforestation and planting nearly 49,000 trees in various cities and governorates of the kingdom. The campaign has completed 34 agricultural projects in cooperation with the Ministry of Works, the Ministry of Municipalities, Affairs and Agriculture and the Supreme Council for the Environment. The Secretary General of the initiative, Sheikha Maram bint Isa Al Khalifa, expressed her deep thanks and appreciation to government and private institutions, civil society institutions and individuals 
for their cooperation and solidarity to make the national campaign for afforestation in its first phase a success, which came in response to the directives of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister in addressing climate challenges. She praised the follow-up of Her Royal Highness, the wife of His Majesty the King and President of the Supreme Council for Women, Princess Sabika bint Ibrahim Al Khalifa, in this regard. The Sunni endowments announced that Eid al-Adha prayer will be held at 5.11 a.m. on Saturday. The head of the Sunni endowments committee, Dr. Rashid al-Hajri, affirmed that all preparations were completed to receive worshippers and the number of main prayer areas has been increased to nine in the various governors of the kingdom and 11 special ones for members of non-Arabic speaking communities have been included, in addition to ensuring the entry and exit plan to ensure no overcrowding. The largest annual Hajj pilgrimage since the coronavirus pandemic kicked off in Saudi Arabia, marking a significant step towards normalcy after COVID-19. Hajj is considered the world's largest religious gathering, with about 2.5 million people performing the ritual in 2019. However, due to COVID-19, Saudi Arabia had sharply decreased the number of pilgrims allowed to perform the ritual. This year, the kingdom has allowed 1 million pilgrims from inside and outside the country to participate. Eight people were killed and 44 injured in a car crash today near Egypt's southern province in Aswan when a passenger bus collided with a truck. Deadly traffic accidents claim thousands of lives every year in Egypt. In January, at least 16 people were killed and 18 others injured when a micro bus collided with a public transportation bus in Egypt's Sinai Peninsula. At least five people were killed and 30 others wounded in an explosion at a weapons warehouse in Yemen. A two-story building collapsed in the blast and survivors were pulled from its ruins, while nearby structures were also damaged. A security official said the weapons were being stored at the bottom of the building and the cause of the blast was not known. <laughs> 